Hello everybody, thank you for jumping on the Scaly Sites page today and checking out this video. My name is Brayden Reich. Today we are talking about southwestern uh, species of snakes for Mrs. Dario's fourth grade class actually. Uh, they are doing a little bit of research on their own about snakes and it all kind of kicked off with the story um, of, I guess it's a girl who takes a snake to the library to figure out what kind of snake it is. Well, I have three snakes we're going to be talking about today. Don't worry, I'll tell you what they all are so you're not lost. And uh, we'll take a good look at all of them. So uh, let's jump right into it. This snake I have here, this is Ferdinand. Ferdinand is a bull snake. Now, even though you guys did probably research on bull snakes, maybe you didn't. Bull snakes are one of my favorite southwestern snakes. Why? Because you can find them all over the southwest as well as the west and northwest they are everywhere out west even going up into parts of canada so very hardy snakes not only do they do good in a warm climate like most snakes but they also do good in pretty cold climates as well so you'll find them in the desert find them in the mountains find them in the prairies you'll find them all over super hardy they love to eat rodents uh, like most snakes, they can stretch their jaws to 180 degrees, and we're going to talk about that some more when we talk about rattlesnakes. A little bit specifically about my bull snake. He is what we call a colubrid. Now, colubrids are basically a family of non-venomous snakes. Most snakes you find in Pennsylvania, unless it's a rattlesnake or a copperhead, it's a colubrid. So you have rat snakes, garter snakes, bull snakes... You won't find that in Pennsylvania, though. Um, ring neck snakes. They're all colubrids. Another colubrid that you'll find, or you might have discovered, that lives in southwestern regions would be like the king snake. So we have the California king snake. We have the Arizona mountain king snake. We also have Brooks king snakes. There's lots of different species of king snakes. There are also colubrids like my bull snake here. Now you'll notice he's sticking out his black tongue. We're going to talk about that some more later on too. Snakes use their tongue to smell. They don't have nostrils like you and me. Instead they have a vomeral nasal organ. And they'll use that organ to pick up scent particles in the air. And that's how they smell. That's how they find food. Bull snakes, one really neat behavior about them is that they will actually go into rodent burrows. They'll kill a whole bunch of rodents on the inside of the burrow, and then they'll start to eat them whole. Which sounds pretty sad for the rodents, but for the bull snake, he's really lucky. And for most of the part, the rest of the environment is also pretty lucky as well. Why? Because too many rodents is usually pretty bad. It usually hurts the plant population quite a bit. So the bull snake is really good at controlling rodent populations. Very cool snake. If I didn't mention, this guy's name's Ferdinand. He's Ferdinand the bull snake. And he's very happy to be on this video today. So we're going to take a look at a few more clips of the rattlesnakes that I have here at Scaly Sites. And you guys can check them out. Once again, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. We will be doing a video session with the classroom uh, today, pretty soon, around 11 o'clock. So don't worry if you didn't miss it. We're basically, what I'm talking about in this video is what we'll be talking about in that live video uh, it will just of course obviously be live so hope you enjoy the rattlesnakes uh, I try to give the best information I can on those snakes and uh, hopefully it works out they were pretty wiggly so we'll see thanks for watching good all right so that took a little bit longer than expected but what we have here is a little Mexican Pacific rattlesnake it has some other uh, common names as well but this is just a juvenile. They are one of the larger species of rattlesnakes uh, found in Mexico. Now you won't really find them here in the United States, but a lot of their relatives, like the Mojave, they actually have a very similar venom count to a Mojave rattlesnake. The Western Diamondback, the uh, Curtalis pyrus, which would be the speckled rattlesnake, uh, as well as like the black tail rattlesnake, all of them are native to the United States. So this guy just happens, his population just happens to not go as far north 
into the United States, a uh, whole stay in Mexico. But he runs into a lot of the similar species that we do have here. And he is very similar. You can see the diamonds on his back. He looks a lot like a diamond uh, back rattlesnake. But as he gets older, his pattern will actually kind of fade away into more of like a reddish or yellow. Uh, usually it's actually a brown solid color. So he kind of loses his pattern. That all has to do with camouflage and uh, staying away from predators. Now, a few things about rattlesnakes. A lot of people think rattlesnakes are scary, which really they are uh, just, they're venomous, right? So we do have to respect them. You shouldn't be scared of a snake by any means. And if you leave a snake alone, it's not gonna bother you. And that's one of the things I wanted to talk about today with you all. So when we find snakes in the wild, um, whether it's venomous or not, it's always important to give that snake a lot of space. Uh, whether it be a rattlesnake or a corn snake uh, or an innocent little bull snake, just giving that snake space will definitely mean that you'll be good to go. You'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to worry about that snake bothering you. It's those people that poke and prod at snakes or uh, try to pick them up. That's when you get accidents to happen. Uh, also, when you're hiking, if you're hiking in a place that is known to have uh, snakes, especially venomous snakes, it's always good just to be aware of where you're walking, what you're doing. Uh, snakes are very good at hiding in cracks and crevices, but when they're out looking for food, they're going to be crossing paths and trails looking for any rodents that they might want to eat. And that brings us into what this guy likes to eat. Now, he's so tiny right now, it kind of makes you wonder what rodent is small enough for him to eat. But truth be told, he's just going to eat pretty much baby rodents, maybe some bird eggs. Uh, rattlesnakes tend not to eat other snakes. They will eat some uh, amphibians like toads, and they'll eat some small lizards as well. But really, he's going to hunt for small mammals uh, predominantly because mammals give off a very high body temperature, whereas reptiles that are cold-blooded tend to give off a lower body temperature. So... Since he likes to hunt warm-blooded uh, prey, it's going to be mostly birds and mammals. Now, of course, as he gets larger, it's not going to be any problem at all for him to find food, whether it be a prairie dog, whether it be um, rats, mice, other various rodents, ground squirrels that are found out west. Now, if you get a good look at him now, he's a little irritated, and he's trying to rattle his tail. Baby, baby rattlesnakes actually can't rattle their tail. Now, he's trying to rattle his tail because it's uh, instinctual behavior that they have in order uh, to warn predators to stay away. But it's not making any noise. And that's because he actually hasn't shed enough times to make a real rattle yet. A rattle on a rattlesnake is formed by old scales or scales from previous sheds. So this little guy is not uh, big enough yet. He has not shed enough times to get dead scales on his tail in order to formulate a rattle. But it is kind of funny. They'll still try to rattle their little tail to make uh, noise to scare away predators. He thinks I'm big and scary right now. He thinks my hook is being mean because I keep picking him up and putting him down. He's perfectly fine. He's just hanging out. Rattlesnakes also have, uh, or are also what we call pit vipers. So they will have heat sensing pits on by their nostrils on the end of their snoot right there. And they'll use those heat sensing pitch pits to find their prey that give off a body heat. Now he's a quick little bugger. He really likes to try to get off this bin here. Hopefully our other guy isn't so pesky, but we'll see. He's doing a really good job showing off for you guys. You can see how he moves in that serpentine motion. As they get bigger, they'll do what we call like a caterpillar or a rectilinear motion when they'll just move the little muscles on their belly in order to propel themselves forward. That really occurs in really large vipers. Usually rattlesnakes, you'll see this serpentine motion. And then of course you have your sidewinders that you'll find out west as well that we have here in the US, even some and they move in that sidewinding motion. Very cool. If any of you guys in the class are doing a research on sidewinders, um, they're awesome. Good for you. I like them a lot. They're very cool. Um, 
And if you're interested in finding a snake to do more research on, definitely look into Sidewinders. They have some cool things going on for them. Before I put this guy away, I do want to mention just his venom uh, potency, what kind of venom he has going on for him. So most rattlesnakes have a hemotoxic venom, which are going to affect your uh, cardiac system. So it's going to affect your blood, your heart. It's going to either clot your blood or it's going to make your heart rate increase uh, to the point where you'll get very sick and it's very, very, very bad for you. But what's really neat about this rattlesnake here is that he is also known to have a slight neurotoxic uh, or neurotoxic uh, qualities in his venom. In his venom, yes. So not only will you notice uh, some hemotoxins, you'll notice maybe your heart rate increase. Uh, you'll notice uh, your blood may coagulate uh, upon a bite. But you'll also notice maybe you'll get some muscle spasms. Maybe you even go, if you really have a bad reaction, some people have been go, have gone into seizures uh, from the snake bites, but usually it's just kind of muscle spasms. You have uh, blood clots or increased blood flow, um, as well as you're gonna have lots of cytotoxic uh, reactions as well, which is like skin deterioration, skin yellowing and swelling, uh, kind of gross, but, Really, all Venom uh, was designed for, all Venom is, is a uh, modified saliva, you could say. Uh, it helps for digestion. So when this guy eats a mouse or a rodent, that Venom is going to break down uh, all the hair, the bones even, as well as teeth and muscles and tissue uh, from that food to help him digest it a lot easier. And so he can eat his prey whole. Now, obviously... Uh, Venomous snakes have adapted the ability to bite their prey, and they'll just kind of sit back, wait for their prey to die, and then they'll start eating it, which is kind of cool. He does have big uh, fangs, at least big in comparison to his head. They're very large to you and me, since he's such a small snake, they don't look that big. But he has nice fangs, and the vipers have their fangs tucked up in the roof of their mouth, and then when they go to bite their prey, they untuck them, reach them out, and then they'll grab their prey with their two little fangs and prick through their skin. So very neat. All right, so this here is a little bit bigger than our last rattlesnake. This is a juvenile Western Diamondback rattlesnake. So he still has a bit of growing to do yet. He'll get quite a bit bigger, but he's using that rectilinear motion I kind of mentioned before, that caterpillar, to crawl around. A little curious, checking everything out, really flicking that tongue out. He's really not agitated at all. He's doing very good. He's not even rattling his tail. Now, he could rattle his tail. He's at a ripe age where definitely be rattling his tail if he felt threatened at all. Uh, he'd coil up. He'd wave his tongue out if he was really annoyed or bothered, but he is not. He's just kind of curious, checking everything out, minding his own business. Pretty new snake to the collection. We just got him the other day, actually, and he's been doing very well. He's a very pretty snake. I'm interested to see what he'd look like when he sheds. His scales will all be nice and vibrant. But funny enough is that our juvenile, uh, our baby Mexican uh, Pacific rattlesnakes had more of a diamond pattern than he does. He has more of a, his diamonds are very blotchy. Uh, not the greatest diamond pattern. Um, but nonetheless, we call them the Western Diamondback Rattlesnake. Uh, their scientific name is Cryptolis atrox. And as I mentioned a bit earlier, we talked, we mentioned uh, king snakes. We mentioned how some snakes will eat other snakes. And unfortunately for this rattlesnake, the king snakes really like to hunt them down and munch on them. So this guy, even though he is a predator for many mammals and birds, and even though he is venomous for a king snake, he's an excellent food source. So they will actually hunt down rattlesnakes. They'll use their tongue to smell. And once they find that rattlesnake, they're going to look for the head. Why? Because the head's the only thing that is going to uh, bite back. So what a king snake will do is once he finds that head, he'll strike out, put his mouth around the rattlesnake's mouth so the rattlesnake cannot bite back, and he'll constrict his prey because king snakes are constrictors just like our bull snake, just like our corn snake. Now, a lot of you might be wondering, well, what if the king snake miss? 
Or if he missed the rattlesnake, he bit, let's say, the body part of the rattlesnake instead, and the rattlesnake bit him back. That would be really bad for the king snake, right? Yes, it would be very bad for the king snake. But king snakes are actually, uh, they have adapted some kind of immunity to rattlesnake venom. It's not going to work 100% all the time. It's not like they can get a large dosage of venom and be able to survive. But chances are the king snake is going to live another day and be just fine if he were to get bit by a rattlesnake. The real problem a king snake would have to uh, worry about or think about when being bit by a rattlesnake would be how large their fangs are. Those fangs could really dig deep into a king snake's um, vitals, his organs, his heart, and that puncture wound could really mess him up. But luckily for them, they do have pretty tough scales. They're pretty hardy snakes. Chances are they'd be able to survive a rattlesnake bite. But like most things, not always. That was an exception, right? A little bit uh, different than our last rattlesnake we looked at. Not only in size, but also in their venom. So Western Diamondback rattlesnakes really are uh, just hemotoxic. They have some cytotoxins as well. Um, their hemotoxin is quite a nasty cocktail that is going to affect your blood. So whenever you're out west, just really watch where you're walking because a lot of these rattlesnakes do have very nasty bites and if they're not treated right away, could lead to some pretty nasty situations. But he's just kind of minding his own business and doing his own thing. If you guys have any questions about any of the snakes we looked at real quick, uh, feel free to comment and ask away. Uh, I will be doing a live video later today actually for the classroom. Uh, and we're going to be talking about these same snakes. Maybe we'll get into some more discussion if we have more questions uh, about other species of snakes that we have here and other species of snakes that you guys will be doing research or looking into or have looked into. Uh, but like I said, any question in the comments, uh, feel free to ask. I'll answer it the best I can. Uh, I think I covered pretty much everything as far as rattlesnakes go, uh, which is really what I wanted to talk about just because they're probably, once again, um, your most well-known family of snakes. When we talk about southwestern snakes, we think of our rattlesnakes, our pit vipers. Um, but keep in mind, there's other cool snakes out there too, like the king snakes, the bull snake, and the shovel nose snakes all out there I think are very cool as well and have experience working with them too. So thank you guys for watching. Once again, any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, my name is Braden Reich. Thank you for jumping on Scaly Sites page and watching the video and have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Bye.